Good morning. Namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's take a few moments to become present. Find a nice, comfortable seated position where your spine can be nice and straight and tall, opening up your chest, opening up your diaphragm, and opening up your heart. Your heart. Gently close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes. Soften your shoulders. Soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is, soft and gentle, breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You may open your eyes now. For this morning's intention, you can think of a positive word or phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. This morning's intention I'd like to talk about is the second niyama. Now the niyamas are the second limb of the eight limbs of yoga and those are the guidelines on how to interact with yourself. <clears throat> the second niyama is santosha, which is Sanskrit for contentment. And I think one of my favorite um, quotes to show contentment, or just to me is the essence of con contentment, is this quote. What day is it? asked Pooh. It's today, squeaked Piglet. My favorite day, said Pooh. So contentment is the gateway to happiness and satisfaction within, without relying on possessions and or attachments. Benjamin Franklin said, contentment makes poor men rich. Discontentment makes rich men poor. Many of us do yoga poses the asana part of our yoga practice. So our bodies can be healthy and happy. Santosha or contentment is what we can do to have our minds and our spirit be healthy and happy. There's even an exercise we can do for our mind and our spirit and that's gratitude. So this morning I have a meditation for us to do it's a, a gratitude meditation script from Alina Health. And if you'd like to incorporate a mudra, there's a mudra, it's uh, spelled T-S-E, but it's pronounced Se. And it's, um, it's a mudra for seeking happiness. It improves your mood. It decreases depression and anxiety. And to do it, you put your hand up, place your thumb inside your palm and just wrap your fingers around it. So it's kind of odd for seeking happiness, you end up kind of in a fist position, <laughs> but um, that's the same mudra. So I'm gonna um, go through this gratitude script, um, gratitude meditation script. It's a little bit long, but um, I think it's, it's lovely. 
So it starts, and everybody, um, I hope, is in a nice, comfortable position. Um, it says, take a few deep breaths and let your chest rise and fall with each inhalation and exhalation. When you're ready, let your eyes drift close. As you continue to breathe slowly and deeply, let your attention rest gently on your breath, feeling the movement as it enters and exits your body. Each time you exhale, let go of any tension. Relax your face, your shoulders, your belly, and your legs. On your next exhale, settle your attention to the area around your heart. Focus on the feelings of love, compassion, empathy, forgiveness. With your attention on your heart center, bring to mind something or someone you are grateful for. As you continue with your easy, relaxed breathing, perhaps you feel gratitude for being alive or healthy. Perhaps you are grateful for the abundance of nature that produces food to nourish your body and beautiful scenery to nourish your soul. Bring your attention to people who truly nourish you in your life and how they bless you with their presence. Feel gratitude for your own life and the many gifts that you've been blessed with. Now bring your attention to how this gratitude feels in the area around your heart. With each inhale, let this feeling grow outwards, expanding to fill your chest, your arms, your hands, your legs, and your feet. With each inhale, this feeling grows, filling you up. And now, even as you return your attention to your breath, let your body remember the sensations of your gratitude. You may open your eyes now and return to your normal breath and I will meet you on the mat.
And if you have a block, it might come in handy today. Let's start our asana practice with Oscar <laughs> in a nice seated position, bringing your um, hands beside your side. It's going to be distracting, but I'll try to bear with us. Um, so we'll start with a few head nods and turns and circles just to kind of warm up our neck area. So when you um, do the first one, we're going to do head nods. We're going to incorporate a kind of a sitting cat cow posture as well. So um, you bring your hands to your side or to your waist. But when you look down to the earth, to your lap or to your navel, round your back as you're looking down. So you're kind of looking down, but bringing your head down toward the mat. So your back rounds out. Then inhale, lifting your head up to the sky. You can arch your back, sending your gaze up above the trees, just at a 45 degree angle, not straight up into the sky. Again, exhale, rounding your back, dropping your gaze down to the mat. Inhale, lift your head up, arching your back, sending your gaze up to the top of the trees. Exhale, rounding your back, sending your gaze down. And inhale, sending your gaze up. Again, doing the cow version, sending, arching your back. And then bring yourself back to a neutral position. Then exhale, turn your head gently, looking to the left over your left shoulder. Just do this very slowly with control a relaxed control. Exhale, bring it back to center. Inhale, turn your head to your, the right, looking over your right shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. Just relax here for a moment. And then we'll do a circle. So you can draw a circle with the tip of your nose and let you go at your own pace and create three nice big circles. One inhaling and exhaling along the way. Two. Three, and then reverse the direction, inhaling and exhaling along the way. And then back to center. We'll start with uh, some sun breaths as well. So fingertips on the sides, on the mat. Inhale, bring your arms up overhead. And exhale, bringing them back down to the back. Inhale, breathe up. And exhale, coming down. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, lift your arm or <laughs> lower your arms down. See if you can find that Ujjayi breath, that kind of Darth Vader breath when you're doing this. Get that breath working for the rest of the practice. Bring your arms up overhead. Twist over to the left side, bring both arms down. Right hand lands on your left kneecap, left hand lands behind your hips. Just gaze to the left for a moment. 
and then inhale, sweep your hands up and over, turning to the right and bring your hands down, left hand on your right knee, right hand behind your hips. Take a moment to gaze. There is not a cloud in the sky, by the way, this morning. So inhale, sweep up. Turning to the left and bring your hands down. Inhale, sweep up. Turn over to the right. Exhale, bring your hands down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, turning to the left, bring your arms down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, turning to the right, bring your hands down. And inhale, come back, come back to center and bring your hands back down. Extend our right leg out at a diagonal, keeping your left foot tucked up against your thigh. We're gonna do some um, side recline head to toes. Then bring our left arm up with our right hand on the inner part of our right knee. And then we're just sliding the right hand down toward the foot, reclining over our right leg, sending our gaze out straight ahead. And remember your breath, that Ujjayi breath, get to the point where it's that sweet spot where you can keep that breath nice and even. And then come back up. And then switch legs. So you send your left leg out at a diagonal. Right foot comes against your left inner thigh. Left hand along the inner part of your left knee. Right arm goes up. And sliding down. Keeping your gaze out ahead. And again, find that Ujjayi breath to let you know how, how far down into the pose you should go. And then come back up. We're gonna roll down on our backs. So you could do it one vertebrae at a time, lowering to the mat or express by tucking your hands under your knees and just roll back. Bring your knees to your chest and give them a nice gentle hug. And allow your lower back to uh, rest directly on the mat. Just send some attention there, some awareness there of, of bringing the, that back tailbone, um, or the back, I should know the names of these bones. <laughs> anyway, those back bones, um, lower back, right on the mat. And then we're gonna wrap our interlaced fingers around our left knee and send our right leg out at a 45 degree angle. So it's extending to the bottom, toward the bottom of the mat, but it's lifted in the air at a 45 degree angle. Both toes are flexed, pointing up to the sky. And again, bring that awareness to your lower back so that your lower back is connected with the mat. And then gently with control, lower your right leg down to the mat. Very slowly. it lands on the mat and then once it touches lift it slowly back up with control to that initial 45 degree angle and then bring the right knee back in tuck it in knees to chest give them a nice hug and we'll do that on the other side so interlace your fingers around your right knee extend your left leg out toward the bottom of the mat 
so that it's in the air at a 45 degree angle. Both toes are pointing up to the sky. Lower back is connected with the mat. And then slowly with control, lower that left leg down to the mat. And once it touches, slowly with control, bring it back up again. And then bring it back to your chest. Give both knees to the chest a nice hug. And we'll do that one more time on each side. So extend your right leg out, 45 degree angle. Toes are flexed, pointing up to the sky. Lower back is on the mat. Slowly lower your right leg down. Till it touches, slowly raise it back up. Bring the knee back to your chest. Switch sides. Extend your left leg out to the bottom of the mat. Toes are flexed. Lower back is on the mat. Slowly with control, lowering it down to the mat. Let it touch and then slowly raise it back up again. And then tuck your left knee to your chest. Give both knees a nice gentle hug and send the soles of your feet onto the mat. So they're touching the mat. Bring your feet about hip width apart and bring them toward heels toward your hips. We're going to do a few cat cows here in a reclined position. So if you'd like uh, support, you uh, put your arms alongside with your palms facing down onto the mat for to support you. Shoulders are nice and snug in the mat. And then we're going to round our tummy, tilting our tailbone up for cat, and then tilting our tailbone down for cow, which produces an arch in her back. Inhale, rounding our tummy, creating a bowl, tilting our tailbone up. Exhale, arching the back. And do these mo movements nice and slow with control. Then lowering your back, tucking your tailbone up, creating that bowl for cat. And then exhale, arching the back for cow. Then inhale for cat, creating that bowl. And we're going to push our feet down into the mat and lift our hips up to the sky for bridge pose. Keeping our gaze up to the sky. Come up as far as it is comfortable for you, and then slowly with control, lower down, connecting each vertebrae with the mat as you go. And we'll do a few more cat cows. So arch your back for cow. Inhale. Drop your back down, tilting your tailbone up for cat. Exhale for cow. Tilting your tailbone down, arching your back. Inhale, rounding your back. Tilting your tailbone up, push down into your feet. Again, lift your hips up to the sky. Keeping your knees parallel with one another, not splayed out. Just see if you can go up just a skosh higher. Continue your ujjayi breath. And then slowly with control, 
lower the flooring back down to the mat, one vertebrae at a time. And one last time, we'll do a few cat cows. So inhale, rounding your tummy, tilting your tailbone up for cat. Exhale, dropping your tailbone down, arching your back for cow. Inhale, rounding for cat. Exhale for cow. And then inhale for cat. Push down into your feet, lifting your hips up to the sky. Keeping your knees parallel with one another. And then slowly lowering back down one vertebrae at a time. We'll come back up to hands and knees so you can rock and roll your way back up or lean over to the side and make your way back up to um, your hands and knees. Coming into tabletop. Our knees are right below our hips, wrists are right below our shoulders, hands are uh, open, fingers are splayed open. Navels tucked to our spine to create a nice flat back. We're going to do an extended puppy. So keeping your knees and your hips where they are, we'll slowly walk our hands out in front of us, bringing our chest down toward the mat. And just get to the point, and you may want to use your block here where your head Rest either on the mat or on the block. Nice big stretch. And then walk your hands back up to tabletop. We'll go into bird dogs, so bringing your knees together. And find that equal distribution of weight in your hands. Lift up your right leg to hip height, pointing your toes toward the back of the mat. And then lifting up your left arm, shoulder height, pointing your fingers to the top of the mat. Then we're going to point on the inhale, flex our foot, pointing our toes down to the mat on the exhale. So inhale, point. Exhale, flex. 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 And bring both hand and knee back down. We'll do that on the other side. Again, just kind of reassess your hands, your weights. Uh, distribute evenly. Lift your left leg up to hip height. Lift your arm up to shoulder height. And don't tip over. Point your toes on the inhale, flex on the exhale. Point, inhale, flex, exhale. Point, inhale, flex, exhale. Point, inhale, flex, exhale. Point, inhale. Flex, exhale, point, inhale, flex, exhale, and bring your hand and your knee back down. We'll just lower our hips to our ankles, extend our arms out front for child's pose. Slowly come down, or you can have, wrap your arms around you, whichever you prefer. Take a few deep breaths here in child's pose. And 
walk your hands toward your knees, keeping your hips over your ankles. Come into a kneel position, which is hero's pose. And we'll do some chest openers. So we're gonna bring our hands around the back of our hips, relaxing our shoulders, rolling them back. And inhale, extend our interlaced fingers away from our hips. Exhale, bring them over to our right waist. Inhale, extend them back. Exhale, bring your hands over to your left waist. Inhale, extend them back. Exhale, bring them over to the right waist. Inhale, extend them back. Exhale over to your left waist. Inhale, extend back. Exhale over to your right waist. Inhale, extend back. And last one, exhale over to your left waist. Placing your fingers back on the mat, tuck your toes under and walk your hands back coming into a squat. And then push down, come up to mountain pose, and we'll do the mountain pose with our toes facing the straight edge of the mat. You can re um, lift your toes up and spread them apart. And bringing them back down to the mat, lift your heels up. And then bring your heels down and feel that connection with the earth, that grounded, nice grounded feeling. Our, for the mountain essentials or posture essentials, our legs are nice and straight and strong with a gentle bend in our knees. Navels tucked to our spine. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back, opening up our chest. Navels tucked to the spine, I think I said that already. Chin is slightly tucked toward your chest. Crown of your head's reaching up to the sky. And we'll take a deep inhale, sweeping our arms up overhead. And exhale, bending your knees, bringing your hands down to the mat, down to the earth. And just check in here. Send nourishing breaths, deep breaths, any tension you may feel. And then inhale, bringing your hands to your shins, flattening out your back for half forward fold. Create a nice straight spine, back of your neck, sending your gaze down. Then exhale, dropping the crown of your head down toward the mat. Inhale, sweep your hands all the way up and send them up above us, lifting up onto our tippy toes. We'll come into palm tree. And just sway here for a moment or two, up on our tippy toes, working on our balance. And exhale, lowering our heels back down to the mat, lowering our hands back down to the mat, keeping our knees deeply bent. Inhale, half forward fold, hands come to shins, back flattens out, spine is nice and straight. Exhale, crown of your head goes down toward the mat. Inhale, sweeping your hands all the way up and overhead again. We'll bring our hands together and we're gonna take our right hand and wrap it around our left wrist. These are um, side stretches, not the but the support side stretch. Wrap your right hand around your left wrist and we're going to kick our left hip out a little bit as we guide our left hand over to the right side, creating a nice crescent. Find your ujjayi breath and then inhale, come back up. Hands go up straight. There's actually a little crescent moon in our cloudless sky. There's a crescent moon directly up in the sky right now. 
then wrap your left hand around your right wrist, kicking out your right hip. Guide our right hand over to the left. Ujjayi breath might be a little difficult to find, but get to that sweet spot where it sounds nice and even. Bring your hands back up one more time for each side. Right hand around left wrist, guiding your left hand to the right. Inhale, come back up. Switch hands, left hand around right wrist. Pick out your right hip guiding your right hand to the left. Inhale, come back up again. And exhale, bring your hands back down to the mat. Bending your knees, coming into half forward fold, straight back, exhale, dropping the crown of your head down toward the mat. And then inhale, sweeping your hands up again. Hands come together. Then we're gonna extend our arms out in front of us so that they're at shoulder height and directly in front of us. We'll do the 180s. So we're gonna send our right hand 180 degrees to the back. And we're gonna watch our right fingertips with our eyes. And our left hand's gonna to come to our right shoulder. And then inhale, come back to the front. We'll do that on the other side. So we're gonna watch our left hand as it makes a 180 degree turn to the back. As it does, we're bringing our right hand to our left shoulder. And then sweep back again to the front. One more time on each side. Follow your right hand as it makes a nice 80, 180 degree semicircle to the back. Inhale, come back to the front. And last time, watch your left fingertips as they go around to the back. Right hand comes left shoulder, and then bring them all back to the center. Lift them back up to the sky, and then sweep them down to the mat, bending our knees. Inhale, halfway up, flat back. Exhale, crown of the head comes down toward the ground. Inhale, sweep our hands up all the way up overhead. Hands come to heart center. And then hands come to the hips. Fingertips are pointing back down toward the mat. Feet are hip width apart. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Chin is tucked to your chest. And just drop our shoulders back for supported back bend. And find your ujjayi breath. Adjust your pose so it's nice and even. And then inhale, come back up. How's everyone doing? You may have noticed we didn't do a pranayama breath technique this morning. With a contentment um, santosha, um, Yama, I always love doing the breath of joy. So we'll take a moment here and start our next part of our practice with the breath of joy. So as a reminder, it's a three-part inhale and a one-part exhale. And three parts I'll show you. It goes inhale, 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 exhale. And you bend and you just really exhale out. So again, it's inhale up, inhale, inhale, exhale. 
inhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. One last time, inhale, 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 exhale. It's like the um, Ode de Joy of conducting Beethoven's Ode de Joy. So that's how you can remember it. So let's start again in mountain pose, sweeping our hands up overhead. Big inhale, exhale, forward fold, bringing your hands to the mat. Inhale, half forward fold, straightening out our back, gazes down. Exhale, forward fold, bringing our hands to the mat again, extending both feet to the back of the mat, coming into plank pose. Shoulders are right over the wrists, fingers are splayed out. Navels tucked to the spine, creating a, um, well, not creating flat back, but raising your hips up slightly. Heels are pushing to the back of the mat. And we'll come down gently to the mat, either chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Either one, keep your elbows tucked to your side, toward your ribs, and come down to the mat. Then slide your hands to the front. We'll come into Sphinx pose. So our elbows are right below our shoulders. Our hips are on the mat, contact in the mat. The tops of our feet are actively on the mat. We'll stay here for a moment, but what I'd like you to do is to take your right foot and bring your right heel as close to your right hip as you can possibly get. Just pause in that position for a few moments. And if you can, you can take it a little further to half frog. And to do that, you would turn your left hand toward your right elbow, laying it on the mat, and then bring your right hand to your foot, your right foot grabbing your toes, pointing your elbow up to the sky, and that's called half frog. Provides quite a bit more stretch. And then you can release everything. We'll bring our hands right under our shoulders, lift our hands up off the mat for baby cobra. So we're lifting our chin and our chest up. And then we'll gently place our fingertips back on the mat, right below our shoulders, and slowly lifting our chest and chin up, coming into cobra. Elbows are tucked toward our ribs. And then tuck our toes under and come up into downward dog. We're gonna walk out our dog here. Fingers are, are open, slight apart. Index finger pointing to the top of the mat. Arms are nice and straight, strong. Chest is reaching toward our thighs to elevate our hips up to the sky. Knees are bent, or you could be pedaling. Take three deep breaths here. One, two, and three. We're going to bring our right knee right behind our right wrist, landing it on the mat right behind the right wrist, coming into pigeon pose. So your your right foot can either be at an angle toward the left side of the mat or straight pointing, have your toes pointing down to the bottom of the mat. The, the uh, I don't want to say correct. The essence of this pose is that you 
try to bring your foot to the left side of the mat as high up as you can. But basically whatever works for you to get comfortable in this. Then slide your left foot back so the top of your left foot is on the mat. And walk your hands back. So you're creating a nice proud pigeon chest. And then walk your hands down, coming into reclined pigeon. So your hands are coming to the front of the mat. And you can have a, a towel or even a block underneath your right hip, give it a little bit more support. And then walk your hands back. Tuck your left toes under, coming, lifting up, bringing yourself back into downward dog. Pedal out here for a moment. And then bring your knees down to the mat, coming into tabletop. And the poses we're going to work on next are camel poses, variations of. So you're in tabletop. We're going to go back to hero's pose. And this you can actually use the block for if you'd like. Set it underneath your uh, seat, your hip bones. So you're sitting on it. So one variation is to be in hero's pose. Bring your fingertips so that they're touching your toes. Your toes are pointing toward the back of the mat. So your the tips of your toes and your fingertips are meeting. And then you're going to lean back. So your hands are flat on the mat, creating a bit of an arch in your back. And if you want to try extending it a little further, you can try lifting your hips up off the um, block and create a camel's pose that way. Another variation is you can have, you can put a towel here underneath your knees but sitting upright on your knees, the traditional, that's the word I was looking for, the traditional camel's pose. You would tuck your toes under. You can do it one hand at a time, like put your right hand on your right heel, sending your left hand up to the sky, and then switch sides, left hand, left heel. And then if you'd like, a little bit more stretch, bringing both hands to both heels, keeping your chin tucked toward your chest so your head does not drop back. So any of those two versions. Personally, I like the hero's pose version myself. We'll do that again on the other side. So we'll um, come back to tabletop. This might be welcome because my foot's starting to cramp. <laughs> Come up into downward dog and walk out your dog a little bit. Relieve that foot cramp. And then walk your feet up to your hands coming into a forward fold. Sweeping your hands up overhead. We'll do a few breaths of joy here. So remember being in the orchestra pit, conducting Beethoven's Ode to Joy. So inhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. 
One last time, inhale, 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 exhale. Excellent. So we'll do that all um, on the other side. So inhale, sweeping our hands up overhead. And exhale, bring down to forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, flat back. Exhale, hands come to mat, sending our feet to the back of the mat, coming into plank. Navels tucked to the spine, lower to the mat, keeping our elbows tucked to, toward our ribs. Slide our hands to the front of the mat, coming into Sphinx. And I did have a dad joke for Sphinx, which I usually do. And it is, where do they make contentment? Where do they make contentment? Ready? At the Satis Factory. At the Satis Factory. <laughs> so we're going to um, take our left heel and bring it toward our left hip. We're keeping it there. And if you want to try the half frog, you would pivot your right arm so your hand comes toward your left elbow. And then take your left hand, reaching back to your left toes, having your elbow up toward the sky. And then release everything back down to the mat. Hands come underneath your shoulders and lift off the mat for baby cobra. So you're lifting with your chest and your chin up, creating a bit of an arch in your back. And then place your fingertips on the mat and lift up your chest and your chin coming into cobra, keeping your elbows tucked toward your ribs. Tuck your toes under, come up into downward dog. And pedal out here for a few moments. Take three deep breaths. One, two, and three. Coming into pigeon, we're gonna bring our left knee to our left wrist and placing the left knee on the mat behind the left wrist. You can have your left foot come over to the right side of the mat or directly uh, straight back and anywhere in between become comfortable. Sliding your right foot down the mat, coming bringing the top of your right foot down to the mat. Walk your hands back to create that proud peacock, peacock pigeon. <laughs> yeah, I bet a pigeon would wish it was a peacock. And then walk your hands down to the front of the mat, coming into recline pigeon pose. And then walk your hands back. Tuck your back toes under, come back up into downward dog. Walk out your dog just a little bit more. And bring your knees down to the mat for tabletop. And again, we're gonna Come into either hero's pose. You can use your block if you want.
bring your toes and fingertips so that they're touching one another and then leaning back so that your hands make full contact with the mat. And then if you are inclined, you can lift your hips off the block or up hot slightly. or the more traditional camel, you can come up onto your knees, tuck your toes under, place your right fingertips on your right heel, lifting your left arm up to the sky. Switching arms, left fingers to left heel, right arm goes up. And then bringing your right arm down to your heel, Expanding your chest, tucking your chin toward your chest. And then come back down to tabletop. You bring both knees to the edges of the mat. Toes come together, lowering our hips to our ankles, come into wild, wide legged child's pose and just relax here in child's pose for a moment. And then walk our hands back up. We're gonna bring our um, back to tabletop and cross the back of our, or cross our legs over in the back and then come to a seated position by just going over them. And then come into a staff position where our sit bones are nice and firmly on the mat, pushing our fists down, lift our hips up and then just really connecting our hip bones with the mat. We're gonna bring our left foot over our right leg and setting our left foot down on the mat to the outside of your right knee. And then bring your left arm to the inner part of your left knee, bringing your right hand to the back of your hips. We'll have reclined twists, or not reclined twists, a uh, seated twist. So known, I believe, as sage pose. And then come back to center, reverse. So our right foot goes on the outer part of our left knee, foot's on the mat, bringing our right elbow to the inner part of our left, I mean, right knee, we'll twist to the left, left hand behind the hips. Send our gaze over our left shoulder. and then come back to center. Roll down on the mat. Knees come to the chest. Give them a nice hug. You can rock your back, back and forth. And our last pose before Shavasana will be happy baby. So you lift your soles of your feet up to the sky and reach your hands up. Get them as high up as you can, perhaps to the outer edges of your feet, keeping the soles of your feet up to the sky. Sending your tailbone, your lower back down toward the mat. And then you can release all that, send your feet down to the mat and prepare for Shavasana. Sending your feet out to the sides, let them just flop open. Let your arms come open, diagonally away from your torso, palms facing up. The 
just relax every part of your body into your mat. That's the sound of Oscar music. Close this morning, I'd like to um, just reference an article I read um, by a yogi who's out of Canada. Uh, her name is Barry Reisman. And it's her take about being gratitude for, uh, grateful for your yoga practice, how to have gratitude for your yoga practice. And she says, one of the best ways I've found to stay committed to your yoga practice is to make a habit of recognizing and articulating how it benefits you. You can do this by taking a few moments or even just a few breaths at the end of the practice to notice and articulate the effects of what you've just done. When you emerge from an asana practice, feeling grounded, centered, and lighter, it can encourage you to return the next day. When you experience a moment of tranquility and freedom from the busyness of your mind in meditation, it can fuel your desire to sit. When contentment arises as you watch your breath, it can make you more inviting, or it can make it more inviting to return your awareness inside again. Without the reflection on and acknowledgement of how your practices serve you, they can easily begin to feel rote and dry and become just another thing to accomplish. But ah, when you water your practices with a recognition of what they bring to you, that's when they spring back to life. 